In this video, I'm going to show you how to import products or update them for your WooCommerce store. And I'm also going to show you how to do it with our inventory management program to update or add barcodes to each product very, very quickly. So I think there is a best practice that you should follow, and that is going to be choosing whether you want to import or update, but not both. If you try to do them both on the same pass, it creates problems. And I think it's easier just to do one and stick with it. First step in order to either update or import your products is that we need to have a CSV file. So under the products tab, you'll see add new, import, or export. So in order to understand the nature of the CSV file, you can export everything. And I've already done so, but let's take a look at the steps. If you choose all columns, all products, categories, and then this button right here to export custom meta, you can see the format of the entire product, and it's big. So I've already done it, and I've chosen the export custom meta so that you can see how the uh, inventory management plugin handles this. We add two fields, barcode and cost. So let's go over and take a look at that. So we have the ID type, SKU, everything, name, and then all the way to the right, let's see if I can find that. We have uh, our custom meta barcode and cost. And here you can put in anything you want quickly and easily without having to do it one at a time on the WooCommerce product page. So if you were to export this and then try to use this as is, you're gonna have a, an enormous file that is very confusing, it's hard to work with, and I just don't recommend it. So what I recommend that you do is to create a condensed version with just what you wanna update. I'm gonna create a CSV file like this that is a lot smaller, and I'm gonna go ahead and add another field. I'm gonna add the SKU, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. Go over here, I'm just gonna copy and paste this header and put it here. Now remember I told you before that you have two choices. You can either update or import. Now if you're going to update, you must have one of these two, either the SKU or the ID specified so that WooCommerce can find the product that you're going to update. And so let's uh, back over here to products and I'll show you how to find the ID. So if you hover here, you can see that I, the ID is shown for each product, 722, 704, etc., etc. Now, if you have a, a variation, the product on that particular variation is shown down under the variation itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to do simple products for right now, and then I'm going to add in the first example. So I'm going to leave the SKU and the ID blank. So I've already have some test data populated in here so you can see we've got the type and it's going to be simple or variation in this example. And so I'm going to do two simple products, test simple and then I have test private because when I have the published status to zero, that will make this a privately published. If it's set to one, which is a true condition in PHP, then that will be published and you need to have a regular price if it's published or you won't see an add to cart on the front end of the site. So I've got prices, and then I'm gonna put in some stock level, and then I'm gonna put in the barcode, which I've just scanned with my barcode reader to do it very, very quickly. And I'm gonna put in a cost, you don't have to, but the inventory management plugin can track costs. And then here you don't want an empty row on a CSV file or it'll cause problems. So we are either going to eliminate it or do a third test. And so we can just go ahead and do another one and then just say dog food. I'm going to publish it and say that it's 250. We've got 10 in stock. And then I'll show you how to do a barcode. And let's just scan the barcode real quick. And then the cost just says 75 cents. All right, now all you have to do next is export this to CSV. So file, export to CSV. 
and give it a name. Let's just uh, entitle this three. I, I know exactly where it is. And then head over to WooCommerce. So remember, we're going to add, not update. Choose the import. And then uh, find the file, which is going to be untitled 3 CSV. And then here is where you have this choice to update existing products. And we're not even going to check it because we don't need to. So let's click continue. And here is where the column mapping comes in. Now I've used the exact names that WooCommerce is expecting. So it has mapped them already correctly. And so that's what I would recommend just to make your life easy and also reduces errors. Uh, the SKU and the ID, when it adds them, of course, they'll assign a new, SKU, a new ID, but not a SKU. So we're going to run the importer and then take a look. All right, three products were imported, view products. Perfect. So we're getting a duplicate barcode error because I'm, I'm doing the same barcodes a couple of times and that won't work. You have to have a unique barcode. So I'll trash those items and then empty the trash and then that error will go away. And now you can see here are the three items that we've added in there. The stock levels have been set, the price has been set, and the one that we said was private is private and these two are published. And then you have complete control over any status or description or anything else that you want to add with this method. So let's go back and I'm going to show you next how to update. So let's grab the IDs. So this ID was 726. The next one is 725. So 727. Okay, now let's change some things because now let's say we made some mistakes or whatever and we're going to say updated, simp updated simple. We're going to change the name and we're going to say updated private. And then let's change some stock levels. All right, and we're gonna leave everything else the same. Let's say that we didn't make any errors with the barcode or whatnot. So now we're gonna do the same procedure that we did before. We're gonna file export. And we can just overwrite the file, that's fine. Now we head back over to the importer. We're gonna find the file. And next, we're going to choose to update existing products. And this is why I would think you should keep it separate so that you just keep your processes uh, the same and it's just easier to manage. So now we're gonna continue. It's gonna do the same thing it did before. It's gonna find all of the column mapping because we've done this before. I'm not even gonna check because I already know it'll work. And then we're just gonna run the importer. All right, so head on over to the products and we'll look at the changes. So here it's updated the name and the stock levels. Here it's updated the stock levels and the prices we didn't change. So it only changes what you change. So that's really all there is to it. Uh, doing it in this way can save you a lot of time because doing them one by one on the dashboard is slow and it the reason is is it's got to ping the database for everyone refresh the page and it's just very cumbersome so here's a way to establish a bunch of products very very quickly and then you can go back one at a time maybe make some changes or you can do whatever you want so I hope that you found this helpful, and if you're interested in the inventory management plugin, I'll put a link in the product description below. Thank you.